Hey guys, how's it going? This is Nat Nader. Welcome back to your weekly dose of creepy pasta. We're back with the second and final part of the furry skin story. If you haven't heard the first part yet or need a refresher, you can go check it out via the link below and then come back to hear the ending. Now, before we roll into the story, I want to thank the members of the coven over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Join today via the link below or the card on screen if you feel like it. Shoutouts, as always, to the disciples. Tiffany, subscribe SoundCloud, Backwards D-Dog, Ali G, Vera Ohio, Sylvia Kirschbaum, Jelly, Jim Jambonks, Seth B. Myers, Amberly Perry, Teddy Dog, and Brooklyn Gonzalez. Love you all so much. Thank you, one and all. Now as always, turn out the lights, get comfortable, and let the story begin. A human baby. It blinked up at him, squinting against the bright light with a soft noise of complaint. Fat little fists waving in protest at being interrupted from a nap, looking hardly old enough to crawl or even sit up. The baby was clean, plump and healthy, dressed in a yellow onesie with bumblebees embroidered on the chest. It blinked up at him with very little interest, before yawning and sticking a pudgy hand into its drooling mouth, tufts of blonde hair swirling about in unkempt little wisps. Shaw's mouth hung open, his eyes bulging. At least the answer to this mystery was a simple one, squatters. That would account for the dishes, the trash, and the food. But where was the mother now? The baby was washed, well fed, and aside from being hidden in a dresser and left on its own, it looked cared for. Whatever, he grunted, twirling the hunting knife in his fingers to thrust it back into the holster. Ain't my problem. He didn't have any use for babies, and this one was an unwelcome inconvenience that he'd have to keep quiet if he wanted to stay the night. There was a thud outside the cabin, like a large branch falling close to the porch. Shaw's hand instinctively tensed over his knife, slinking low toward the window. He peered out. He couldn't see anything, but he heard the creak of floorboards to his right. The hairs on the back of his neck prickled. He probed his tongue against his still throbbing gums and licked his dry lips. From behind him, the baby let loose a loud squeal. Outside, there was a shuddering gasp, like a sob. Relieved, Shaw poked his head out the window. Come on out, got your kid in here, he snapped. I don't have all... He gazed into a pair of huge, saucer eyes bulging in a round, furry face. It crouched low against the porch, forelegs bent like a spider, bat-like ears flattening as it let out a furious hiss full of razor-sharp teeth. Shaw scrambled back with a strangled yell, hitting his head against the window frame in his haste. The beast followed after him, Already halfway through the window, long taloned fingers scraping against wood as it forced its way inside, snarling and shrieking at him. The hell you will, Shaw roared, kicking the dining table with his full strength, laughing wildly as the monster screamed on impact. With a swipe from both front legs, the beast sent the table toppling over with a crash. It slunk inside the cabin, crouched and hissing. They circled each other, Shaw gripping his knife and making no sudden movements. Confused and distressed, the baby was screaming its tiny lungs out. The beast darted to the side suddenly, 
scuttling like a crab, not towards shore as he'd expected, but toward the makeshift crib, claws outstretched. He didn't know what made him do it. Selflessness wasn't in his nature, and it wasn't as if he cared one way or another what happened to the brat. He should have let the beast be distracted by easy prey and made his getaway out the door. But he didn't. He lunged, sprinting and catching the beast by the neck in a football-style tackle, burying his knife into one of its huge hands. It screamed, rocking its shoulders and reaching with a free hand to shake him off. Blood splattered against the wood floors and pure white bed sheets. Shaw dropped back, scooping up the baby and tucking it firmly against his chest as he dashed across the cabin and vaulted out the window, almost rolling across the porch. Adrenaline kept him going, thundering down the path and into the woods without looking back. The monster's screams and the baby's frightened wails echoing through the trees and inside his head. Stinging from the humiliation of a retreat, he paused long enough to bellow at the cabin for the sake of his pride. This ain't over between us. I'm just getting started. He would end things all right, just as soon as he had a dry shotgun and fresh ammo. He'd be on top, and the hunt would be on. Shaw was regretting his moment of altruism. His swollen jaw throbbed mercilessly. His damp clothes were chafing him raw, and worst of all, the brat wouldn't stop crying. Its ear-splitting wails seemed to pierce right through Shaw's head and into his sore gums. They echoed into the woods, ringing among the trees so everything within earshot was aware of his location. His clumsy, inexperienced efforts to soothe the stupid thing only caused it to wriggle and writhe in his arms, fussing and drooling. He'd also realized that he couldn't aim a shotgun and hold a baby at the same time. When it let out an excruciatingly piercing shriek, Shaw finally snapped. Holding it out in front of him, he gripped it under the armpits and snarled. Uh, shut up! If you make another noise, I'm going to bash you against a tree before you get us both killed. The baby stared at him with wide eyes before its plump face collapsed into a whimper, starting up a mewling, anxious cry. Shaw groaned, cradling it in one arm, pinching the bridge of his nose as he fought his blood pressure. He took deep, steadying breaths. This was a temporary setback. He just had to get to his truck, and then the kid could be someone else's responsibility. He'd found it on Joseph Boyle's property, and that made it Boyle's problem. He had a pretty good idea of what had happened to the mother. He'd not found any evidence of it, but most likely she'd become lunch for a certain bat-eared freak. You're stuck with me. He hissed down at the softly whimpering infant. Mommy ain't here and I ain't your daddy. I ain't changing you or feeding you. So the sooner we're out of each other's lives, the happier we'll be. Got it? He prodded it in its chubby stomach. So, keep quiet. I got the gun and I got the knives. So I make the rules around here. It whined piteously. Shaw hadn't bothered to check if it was a boy or a girl, and he didn't care. All it really boiled down to was a pain in his eyes. Uh, you got some nerve complaining. Could act a little grateful. If I weren't such a sweet, kind-hearted man, I'd have left you. He grumbled, more to himself. He knew perfectly well it couldn't understand a word he was saying, but it probably sensed his tone. Think that big furry bitch would have played nice with you? She'd have split you open and pulled out your insides inch by inch. Then he growled as an afterthought. And the next time we see her, 
I'll gut her myself so she can spend the rest of days mounted to a wall. He continued his track at a steady clip, keeping close to the riverbank. He was confident that he'd bought himself some time by pinning his pursuer to the floor. But she'd get loose again, no doubt about that. The sound of the river masked his footsteps, but that also meant it would be difficult for him to hear her coming. So he paused intermittently to listen for anything other than the typical woodland noises. The trees stretched out before him endlessly, the dim light of evening muffled by the shadow of the woods, and it was only the steady upward incline of the bank that let him know he was nearing his destination. <sighs> See that? He pointed, breathing heavily. That's where I shot the first one. We're close now. He increased his speed, boots slipping against the dirt. With any luck, there'll be something left of it when we get there. He grinned, slipping again and catching himself on a branch. Once I take out our batty friend back there, that'll be $20,000 for me. And if Boyle thinks of paying me any less, I'll gut him too. It was the thought of such a huge payout in his future that gave him new energy. The baby's eyes were closed, exhausted from all the excitement and tears. Its chubby little hands were tucked under its chin, nestled into a tight ball against Shaw's heaving chest. Kind of cute for dead weight, when you keep your mouth shut, Shaw sneered. But when he crested the hill and caught sight of his truck, his improved mood vanished. The bed was empty. Completely empty. Not so much as a scrap was left as evidence to show anything had ever been there. Shaw squatted and examined the bungee cords that had fallen to the dirt. He'd fit them securely. There was no way an animal could have unraveled them. He swore, kicking one of the tires, flinging his shotgun into the dirt. He placed the fully awake and sniveling infant onto the hard surface of the ribbed truck bed so that he could pace, stamping and kicking, cussing a blue streak and ranting at the injustice of it all. Are you telling me she untied the body and ate the entire thing? He roared waving his hands in the air. That ain't possible, I'll tell you one thing. He pointed at the baby, who was watching him with big, scared eyes. I ain't about to be thrown off a cliff, half drowned, forced to babysit, and have my merchandise robbed from me, just so I can go back to boil empty-handed with my tail between my legs. I'm getting that $10,000, and I'm keeping my pride, you hear? And shut up! The brat had started to whine again, snot and drool dribbling down its red, wrinkled face. Shaw was glad he'd never had any kids, or a wife for that matter, but he had to calm down. He had to be on his game, alert. Couldn't fly off the handle when he had a job to do, and one way or another, he was going to do it. And to do that, he needed fresh, dry ammo. He trailed a hand tenderly along the metal surface of his truck as he approached the driver's side door. It had suffered its share of dings and scrapes over the years, but each fresh score he could feel in the paint that was the result of a beast's claws was another pinch of salt in his wounded pride. With a snarl, he pulled the door handle only for it to hold fast with a clunk. He made a couple more bad-tempered attempts, without any success. It was locked, but he couldn't remember locking it. He never had any reason to when he went hunting alone, away from civilization, so it wasn't something he bothered with. Growling to himself, he jammed his hands in his pockets, searching for his keys, 
His rummaging grew more frantic, stamping and swearing with frustration as he realized that he didn't have them until he was almost crawling on his hands and knees in the dirt in case he dropped them close by. The worst case scenario was that he'd lost them in the woods or in the river. He stood up straight, kicking his front tire in disgust. On the other side of the truck, something toppled over with a hollow, metallic noise. Shaw went to inspect it. So he was in luck after all. In all the excitement, he'd forgotten he'd left his ammo box on the ground at the passenger side. He flung open the lid and began selecting new shotgun shells with rhapsodic pleasure. Shaw stroked his loaded gun lovingly as the emasculating feelings of vulnerability melted away to be replaced by a predatory sense of power. But he wasn't ready yet. He knew the second he entered those woods, he would be in her domain. She could come from above his head as well as the ground, and being injured would only heighten her spite and ferocity. Shaw massaged his swollen gums as he thought this over. His truck was locked, and though he could simply walk to Boyles and ask for a locksmith, it was still a problem. Without being able to hide inside if things got nasty, he was left out in the open and vulnerable. He needed to have control again, to take the hunt on his terms, instead of waiting with no plan of action or decent vantage point. Obviously he needed a trap. She'd ambushed him, so it was only fair that he returned the favor. He knew exactly where and how he could do it. But he needed bait. Live bait. He leaned against the bed of his truck, picking at his front teeth with his cracked fingernails, deep in thought. Something big and easy enough to be tempting, that would catch attention by scent or noise. He glanced distractedly over his shoulder, still fondling his gun with his long scarred fingers. The baby had calmed again once the shouting and stamping had stopped, and was curled up in a little ball, half asleep and sucking on a fat little fist. Shaw grinned, a wide, crooked sneer full of jagged yellow teeth as an epiphany clicked the last piece of the puzzle into place. Hidden under a canopy of leaves, his scent disguised by wet earth and loam, as well as a few drops of deer urine for good measure, Shaw congratulated himself on his brilliance. It wasn't like the kid would be missed by anyone. In fact, no one but him knew it even existed. Besides, Shaw was confident he could take his shot before any sort of disfiguring or fatal mauling took place. So he'd come out of it looking like a hero. And if he couldn't fire in time, or it got caught in the crossfire, the body wouldn't be found. And if it did, it was all the beast's fault, and nobody would know the difference. He situated himself in a clearing, not far from his truck where a large stump of a fallen tree served as a landmark, as well as the serving table. He had to say, the kid had behaved beautifully, asleep for most of the prep work so that there was no worry about any beast activity off schedule. He'd tethered them to the trunk by the ankle with a wire cord he kept in his ammo box just in case the brat got restless and tried to wriggle off. It seemed too young and small to get very far very fast, but he had to prepare for the worst. Now all he had to do was wait. It was only a matter of time before the bait got cold, hungry or wet, and its anxious, ear-piercing cries would fill the woods, broadcasting its location. Shaw licked his lips in anticipation, remaining still 
and waiting in silence was part of the job description. He was used to it, but his dark hairy arms were riddled with goosebumps. His jaw set. The woods had grown dark, night having fallen into a peaceful sort of gloom. The trees full with the eerie sounds of melancholy. Their branches knit together into a threadbare canopy. The moon and stars caught and held there, as if in the spools of a dreamcatcher's net. The babble from the river was a distant mumble, outdone by the serenade of crickets, wailing of cicadas, and the occasional call of a screech owl. An ant crawled across Shaw's lip, and he licked it away, crushing it between his teeth. He blinked away fragments of leaves from his eyes, not daring to lift his head to scan the treetops as much as he wanted to. The peaceful night drew on, undisturbed. Then, in the distance, came a mournful, inhuman wail. Shaw's blood froze, splintering in his veins like shards of crystal. He clenched his teeth even harder, despite the pain in his right jaw. Around him, the nighttime noises ceased with all the abruptness of turning off a car radio. On the trunk, a tiny body wriggled with a soft rustle of fabric and loose bark. It mewled, a confused, pitiful sound of distress. Shaw's heartbeat quickened, knowing what was coming. In the woods ahead of him came another blood-curdling shriek. As he knew it would, the baby gave an answering scream, a plaintive, desperate noise that pierced the night silence. It took up its howling cries in succession, splitting the peace and breaking through the woods in a crescendo of answering echoes and hiccuping sobs. From somewhere down the slope, branches cracked and leaves rustled, a heavy body approaching with gathering speed, its claws scraping rock and roots in its haste to investigate. A shriek rose with a thundering growl. The baby continued to sob, tiny pink fists flailing, legs kicking against the cord that kept it tied. Shaw gripped his shotgun, finger hovering over the trigger as he held his breath. He licked his dry lips, his heart hammering with the exhilaration of a hunt. A pair of huge saucer eyes gleamed unblinkingly from the darkness, fixated intently on the stump, framed between shrubs and tree trunks. The creature breathed raggedly from its upward sprint. It stepped forward, crouched and slinking like a cat, sniffing, ducking its head to avoid low-hanging branches and thorns as it crawled on its belly, a limp in its right foreleg. The baby continued to scream its lungs out. The urge to pull the trigger was infuriating. Hot beads of sweat dripping down Shaw's neck and back, soaking his flannel shirt and staining his pits. Each howl from the tree stump piercing his nerves like needles. Victory was so close. She was in range, but if he missed, he lost the element of surprise and it was all over. She needed to be fully distracted. Ears like hers could hear the click of the trigger, despite the loud wails of an unhappy baby. And she was fast. He couldn't be hasty, even though he was seething with the desire to blow her head from her shoulders. As if his animosity could be sensed, the creature lifted its head, ears pricking. Shaw's heart and stomach turned to lead as those ginormous eyes met his. Did it see him? If not, 
couldn't hear his heart beating against his chest, while the sound of his breathing, slowly, it backed away into the gloom until nothing was visible but moonlight glinting from two rounded orbs. Then, in a rapid rustle of leaves, she dashed to the side and vanished. Shaw didn't dare move a muscle, his shoulders tensing so hard his whole spine burned. Sweat and dirt stung his eyes. Where had she gone? Was she stalking behind him, preparing to pounce? Or had she just decided to leave, recognizing the danger she was in on instinct? The baby's cries drowned out any telling noises he would normally be able to catch. Shaw swallowed, his throat dry and sandy. A twig fell, landing onto the ground an inch from his nose. Shaw's breath barely had a second to catch when it was completely stolen from him as a heavy weight slammed into his back, piercing, agonizing pain, stabbing deep into his flesh and tearing, a resounding screech of animal ferocity deafening him. Talons tore through his down vest and flannel, ripping his back into ribbons. Shaw's gun fell from his grasp, his fingers, slippery from sweat and fresh, hot blood. Rows of razor-sharp teeth buried themselves into his right shoulder. The beast shook him violently, like a terrier with a rat, before sending him flying with the toss of its head. He skidded in the dirt and leaves, his back slamming against the trunk of a tree so hard he felt his shoulder blades crunch. He lay there, Stunned, bleeding out from a deep, jagged rip in his neck. He tried to stand, but his legs only jerked and wiggled uselessly. His throat and mouth filled with hot blood, which trickled from his mouth and nose. He opened his mouth and only managed a gurgle. He watched, vision fading, as the beast approached the stump. The baby screams previously loud and distracting, buzzing only faintly in his ears, the way a radio signal is lost through a tunnel. Licking Shaw's blood from its muzzle, the bat-like thing loomed over the stump and lowered its round, nearly snoutless head close. The baby's crying softened into breathless hiccups, distracted. Two chubby hands reached, tangling into the thick brown fur. Shaw waited for it to be snapped up, pulled apart and chewed. The beast rubbed his face against the baby's fleece onesie with a low, contented hum, the way a cat might mark its scent. Then it sat back and raised both of its huge, uncannily human-like hands, one swollen and bloody, and hooked its jaws with its fingers, wrenching its mouth the same way you'd force open a rusty box. Like the seams of fabric, thick fur tore and ripped, mouth opening wider and wider, until it peeled away entirely and collapsed onto the forest floor in a heap, like a loose and unzipped garment. A woman stepped out, pale and naked, Soft brown hair, draped over her curved, ample breasts, and curtaining her face from view. She fell to her knees beside the stump, and tugged the wire cord loose from the baby's ankle, scooping the infant up and clutching it desperately to her chest. She buried her face into its wispy blonde hair, rocking back and forth, her shoulders heaving as her entire body trembled. Shaw watched this through fading vision, losing even the ability to feel shocked, as each breath of air was a battle. She stood, bending down and gathering up her cast-off fur coat, draping it over her shoulder like a toga, tenderly swaddling her baby 
with the loose ends. Long, grotesque arms, like empty gloves, dragged on the forest floor. The limp leather flaps of huge, bat-like ears hung across her shoulder. She bent her head and whispered something inaudible against her baby's ear, before kissing the top of its fuzzy head, soothing it into uneasy silence. The infant still gurgled and whimpered, but safe in the arms of its mother, it began to relax. She then turned and glared at Shaw, eyes far less huge, but still gleaming with pure hatred. A look of loathing that he returned with all the energy he could muster. With the last of his strength, Shaw gurgled out a final parting word as she walked past him. <coughs> Bitch. She paused, scowling down at him. Then her hateful expression softened into a playful smile and she held out her hand, one finger crooked. Shaw's keys dangled above his head, jingling softly as glints of moonlight reflected off their jagged surface, before she snapped her hand closed and turned her back on him, picking up his fallen shotgun with her free hand and disappearing up the slope. He heard the sound of an engine starting in the distance, as his vision grew dark, the forest floor hungrily soaking up his lifeblood like an offering. <laughs>